This is pioneer field agronomist Brent Swart, and today we're here in a soybean field in northwest Iowa talking about an uncommon pest to Iowa, the thistle caterpillar. The thistle caterpillar has been found more numerously this year in the state of Iowa because of some spring weather systems that moved them and moved the moths from the southern U.S. Um, up into the Midwest region. When the thistle caterpillars move into the Midwest from the southern U.S., they are flown up here in the moth form known as the painted lady butterfly. The painted lady butterfly looks similar to a monarch butterfly, except they tend to be slightly smaller and they have more olive coloration on their inner wings closer to their body. The larval form of the thistle caterpillar is the form, uh, the stage in the caterpillar's life cycle that does the most damage to soybean fields in the state of Iowa. The larval form is seen here um, with black and yellow banded coloration around the body of the larva with a spiky type hair uh, formation on the body that makes it easy to distinguish in the field. The thistle caterpillars uh, will typically form a uh, webbing or nest inside uh, curled up soybean leaves where they'll do a, the majority of their feeding. The thistle caterpillars will typically feed for two to four weeks until they pupate. When they pupate on the soybean leaves, they'll pupate for seven to 10 days and then the moths will emerge. The moths will again lay their eggs in the soybean field on the soybean plants where the caterpillars or larval stage will emerge again to continue feeding. Typically in the Midwest in the state of Iowa when the thistle caterpillars are seen they complete two generations per year. Today we're looking at the second generation larva of the thistle caterpillar. After the second generation in the Midwest the painted lady butterflies that emerge from the pupa will typically migrate south in the month of September. Although thistle caterpillars are not known to overwinter in the state of Iowa, we are concerned that they may be producing a third generation in the state of Iowa. When considering a foliar insecticide such as Cobalt Advance, make sure you, you take a note of, of the numbers of thistle caterpillars present and the amount of defoliation present. In the reproductive stage that we're at now in R2 soybeans, we're looking for 20% defoliation as an economic threshold. When you're scouting for thistle caterpillar, it's important that you look at many areas of the field, not just along the edges of the field or the fence line. And also while you're looking at defoliation, be sure not to look at just the top leaves uh, where the, the webbings and the nests are formed, we'll look at the defoliation throughout the canopy, upper, mid, and lower canopy to assess the full defoliation of the soybean crop. Be sure to consider the size of the larva before you spray. Thistle caterpillar typically grow to about an inch and a half in size where they will go to a pupation stage where they will not be feeding on the plant anymore. Although it's important to consider the size of the larvae, remember that the last two instars of the larval life cycle um, is where about 97% of the foliar feeding happens with thistle caterpillar. But if most of the thistle caterpillars that you're finding in your field are towards that inch and a half uh, size of the larva or the caterpillar, this would indicate that they probably won't be feeding much longer and a rescue treatment may not likely result in a return on investment. In this soybean field in Northwest Iowa, we're seeing a lot of this webbing and nesting taking place by the thistle caterpillar larvae, but we're not finding a lot of thistle caterpillars still remaining. The thistle caterpillar that I did find in this field is about an inch and a half long. That would indicate to me that this, this caterpillar or larvae stage is about ready to pupate and will no longer be feeding on this soybean crop. If you have any further questions on thistle caterpillar feeding on your soybeans, please consult your local Pioneer sales rep. Thank you and have a great day. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. 
Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.